Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. Guys, let's take a look at the company AMD, which just have earnings, and uh, oh man, this thing, this thing was bad. This thing was really, really bad. Their earnings were great, but the reaction really was not. So we'll take a look at that. We'll take a look at their earnings very, very quickly. Then let's take a look at their fundamentals and ending it with a, the kind of free cash to see if the current share price is looking like a buy so with that said make sure to like subscribe comment really does help with the algorithm on youtube as well so make sure to follow us next time for investing and please join us on discord which is the best way to get these videos live streams and shorts the link is in the description below so with that said let's get started with this analysis so let's start off with of course their earnings because amd guys as i'm from coin this it is october 29th and they just had earnings as you guys can see right there we got advanced micro devices non-gap eps of 92 cents inline revenue of 6.82 billion piece by 110 million now you guys can see that this revenue is up 17.6 percent year over year everything when it came to all of their segments was significantly up you got record data center segment up 122 percent you got client segment revenues up 29%. Gaming was down though, 69%. Embedded segment revenue was down 25%. And the current outlook when it comes to the company, we can see for the fourth quarter of 2024, AMD expects revenue to be approximately 7.5 billion plus or minus $300 million. At the midpoint of the revenue range, this represents a year over year growth of approximately 22% and sequential growth of approximately 10%. Non-gap gross margin is expected to be approximately 54%. And the revenue for Q4 consensus is $7.55 billion. Now you're probably wondering, wow, those are tremendous earnings. They're really, really good. Except that the stock actually fell 7.63% because of those earnings you guys can see the entry day was actually up 3.96 percent however post market after those earnings fell 7.63 percent now the reason for this is actually one of the dumbest reasons i've ever seen now this article over here essentially shows as to why the company fell so amd just reported q3 earnings here's why the stock is falling it's a summary of everything that we just read when it came to the earnings report all except for one little part and it's right here. AMD said it expects to report revenue between 7.2 and 7.8 billion for the fourth quarter with a midpoint of 7.5 billion. We already read that. Slightly below the 7.55 that analysts were expecting. This is the main reason as to why their earnings completely crashed the stock. I'm going to say completely crashed, but it did fall by a decent amount, right? Double what, um, yeah, essentially double as to what, on, the do on a dollar basis, as to what, the stock gained today so we can see here that on the one year they are up 72.85 percent year to date they're up 12.78 percent year on the 52 week range we got 94 dollars all up to a high of 227 dollars and 30 cents so now let's jump right into, of course, the spreadsheet. We got the ticker for AMD market cap of 269.1 billion dollars that PE oh my goodness 200 a 200 PE. Yeah, 200 PE. This is why I'm like, man, with a current share price of $166, which is a little bit lower now, right? Because of the because of the fall, still the 200 PE, that is that is just it's just too much, man. It's just too much. 10-year average free cash flow it is 776.8 million. The last year's free cash flow is 1.12 billion, which is a really nice increase, but I want to take a look at these trends a little bit further. So Taking a look at now the net income, we can see that this is all over the place. Now, just because we have negative numbers doesn't mean that it's a bad metric, right? I mean, Tesla had negative numbers as well, but it's actually not that bad. When it comes to net income for AMD, we got negative $403 million to one year ago of $854 million, increase of 312%. Now, you can see that this is an increase essentially from nine years ago to uh, three years ago, right? Kind of. But then three years ago to now, it is just crashing when it comes to the net income. Probably due to the fact that this was when the chip shortage was happening right here, 2022, 2021. So I look at this, I'm like, I this is a 50-50 shot as to where they're going. So I'm going to give it a 50%. Looking now into the free cash flow, looks very, very similar. We got negative $193 million to one year ago of $1.12 billion, increase of 681% with an average of $776.8 million. Once again, similar numbers, negatives into the positives, and then just boom, instant fall off as of one year ago. 
Um, I'm going to give this, I would say, once again, a 50%. I just do not know where it's necessarily going. The revenue, we can see. 10 years ago of $5.51 billion, to one year ago of $22.68 billion, increase of 312%. We can see that as of nine years ago is when they really started to really pick up when it comes to their overall uh, revenue. And then a massive spike as of three years ago because of the, you know, because of the chip shortage. Another massive spike as of two years ago, probably due to the whole AI, AI stuff, right? With NVIDIA, that kind of stuff. So... As of right now, as of one year ago, they fell down a little bit, but all in all, this isn't looking too bad. I'm going to say like a 90% for a grade. Into now the assets and liabilities, assets of reference only. This spikes up a lot as of two years ago, and the liabilities does roughly the same. You guys can see the spike up, but then it does start to taper down a little bit. Assets minus the liabilities, yeah, it's just a massive spike as of two years ago, but there's actually remaining it to continue to grow, which is really good to see as well. Average total assets of $22.64 billion and liabilities of $5.786 billion as a difference of $16.85 billion. I'm going to have to say, guys, it's a pretty big spike, but I see the overall trend for this. I'm going to have to say like a 70%, maybe even a 75% would be would be notable, right? Looking down to the cash flow minus the liabilities, their cash flow did fall as of two years ago and one year ago, so it's not surprising. But the overall trend, though, from eight to three years ago, it's actually to bring it up, which is really good to see. Now, as of one year ago, though, they're at negative $10.87 billion. And, well, the, the overall average is negative $4.45 billion. So I'm going to have to give this like a 70%. It's barely passing because they do have instances of it increasing. They took on a lot more liabilities. Understandable, right? With the whole growth aspect kind of thing. So I'm okay with this in a way. Shares of standing. This is where this company just falls apart for me. Because this is just, I mean, dilution to no end. Right? Dilution to no end. But the PE of 200. Uh, normally, I would say understandable but man man this is a massive dilution 10 years ago of 776 million shares to the day of 1.62 billion shares increase of 108.51 percent previously to the current year 0.12 percent guys i'm gonna have to say it around like a 30 percent not zero because they are it's a cult company people will continue to buy it um if the company keeps going up it'd be stupid for them not to issue shares right <clears throat> but at the same time i don't like it so 30 percent massive share dilution and lastly cash equivalents they currently hold 4.1 billion dollars with an average of 2.14 billion dollars overall grade 59 percent and basically it's yeah it's the main thing that kills it is the shares outstanding honestly i it's the fundamentals are good it's just i i it's just too many spikes here at least too many recent spikes which is something that i do not like to see and when taking a look at the discount of free cash flow not adjusting for debt we got 39 dollars 76 cents and then adjusting for debt 82 dollars 5 cents so let's input some of these numbers for the average 10 year revenue in the past 10 years they have increased it at around 26.27 percent every single year so let's say roughly 20 25 and let's go with 30. I really do like those numbers. I think AMD could pretty much do those numbers, right? If they continue to go with the whole AI thing, right? So with the protected share buyback, they have been issuing shares at around negative 9%. So for the lowest assumption, let's say um, 10%. By the way, the negative just means issuing. The median assumption, let's go with um, let's go with negative 8. And then bring it up by 2. Let's go with negative 6. Guys, uh we can see these numbers are absolutely crazy. We're missing one more number, though, and that is the required rate of return. Its chip company is AMD. I want my highest return possible. 12% just beat the S&P 500. I'm going to go, guys, 20%. And this is where everything falls apart for me when it comes to valuation and also justifies that 200 PE as well. Not adjusting for debt, $8.11 to $22.29, and adjusting for debt, $17.21 to $46 and a penny, with a margin of safety of 510 and 15, $14.63 to $43.71. So, not financial advice, obviously, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow, but based off of my assumptions here, we can see that 
it's overvalued. And again, the fundamentals are kind of meh, right? I would like it to be at least in the 70s. It's barely in the 60s. Actually, it's just one below the 60s. So I look at this and I'm just like, ah, it's overvalued. It's just, it's overvalued. Not saying that I don't like the company. I do love their chips. I mean, the laptop I have, I'm recording this on right now, has an AMD Ryzen uh, 6000 Series 7 chip. Right. So I do like the company. I do like their products. Valuation of the stock and the stock fundamentals is when everything just falls apart for me when it comes to actually investing into this company. Again, not financial advice, not saying that you can't make money in it, but from an investing perspective, it does not look like it's a good one. Right. Based off of my assumptions. But again, not financial advice. And every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. So all in all, when it comes to AMD, I don't think it's reasonable to have a 7% loss. Just because it missed revenue by $0.05 billion, that's stupid. But honestly, the discounted free cash was telling me that it's overvalued right now. So anything that brings this thing back down to back down to earth, I guess, I guess you could say that, is all well good for me. So that pretty much does it, guys, for this video. Let me know what you guys think about this company, AMD. I know it's, everybody knows it. Do you guys own it? Uh, what do you think about this company? And with that said, make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as well. Make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. And if you'd like to join us on Discord, which is the best place to get these videos, shorts, and live streams, the link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.